they were just changing curriculum. Common core is to an individual. Individual children have to meet individual outcomes. Every individual child has to have an IEP, and I call it a small letter IEP because it's not really under special ed, under the IDEA, Individual Disabilities Education Act. It's, it's, if, if a child does not meet a specific outcome, that is a behavioral weakness. And that's what the Common Core did. It turned traditional education on its head. You no longer will have grades. You no longer have time. Time is, is the variable now. It doesn't matter how long it takes as long as you meet the outcome. Traditional education is a floor. You build from the floor. You have a, a, a groundwork of what you build up to. The Common Core standards is your ceiling. We will only teach these standards. So it totally is changing the whole concept of what education really is. But the Common Core standards now demand that an IEP, or maybe it's called an individual career plan, an individual career pathway. It could be anything, as long as an individual child has to meet individual outcomes. So what does that mean? That means your child cannot escape the psychological manipulation, the data tracking, in order to meet specific government outcomes. Nor does the teacher, nor does your school district. Those individual teachers will be monitored to make sure those children are teaching. And how will they know? Through the testing, total quality management. They will be able through, they, they call it feed, feedback loop control. It, it's a constant reassessment of who's not doing their job, who is doing the job, are the children meeting the outcomes, what happens to a school district if they fall below a certain level, the state can come in under academic bankruptcy, take over the schools. So the whole agenda with the data collection, remember the decision-making model, is to force compliance. So the whole agenda with Common Core is every individual within the line of making the system work has to come into compliance. So where are we now? With the Common Core standards being passed in every state and uh, the race to the top grants continually feeding the districts to come into compliance, uh, to move their data systems up for uh, the comparability and the transfer of data. And there is some problem with that of um, making sure that every school district in the whole entire United States has the computer broadband uh, ability to transfer data. This is a problem. Um, the next step would be the federal legislation which would mandate that each individual child could be funded. Each individual child will have the remediation. Each individual teacher must conform to the agenda, which was actually put in place a very long time ago. Um, another document that I found who was very much involved um, in the pilot model districts uh, for the Common Core, and there were actually um, I think it was uh, six states that were involved in the Innovation Lab Network. And what was happening under here, different states were actually selected to pilot the uh, individual education plans, uh, the teacher uh, conformity, and um, this is what needed to be done. When I saw the, um, it was a PowerPoint uh, presentation that was done uh, through the Stupsky Foundation, which funded the Innovation Lab Network in uh, some of the different states. I believe uh, Maine was one. Um, Maine, West Virginia, Wisconsin, New York, Kentucky, and Ohio, and I believe New Hampshire is also involved in it now. 
there was a graph that was within this PowerPoint. And what the graph was actually explaining is that there were certain things that needed to be done to force the whole system into compliance. And the key uh, aspects that they were working on was human capital. Of course, they refer to your children as human capital. Uh, assessment, technology, and time and place. These were the key things. If they could get the child, the assessments, the technology, and that they could do this anytime, anywhere, this is what the agenda was. And it moved to exactly what could be controlled. What could be controlled was the curriculum, okay, all of the effective domain, the teachers, and the money. So this whole scheme actually bypassed what wasn't needed in the system. What wasn't needed, and it showed very clearly in their, in their graph, was the community, your, the parents, the churches, whatever, finance. There had to be a way to bypass how the money would transfer directly to the individual child and the governance, okay? We can't have those local school directors in the way to make the system happen. We can't have even your state government in the way to make this happen. And when I looked at the graph, I realized this was a point of how education was going to be used to abolish representative government. How was that going to be done? Well, it's with the new ESA, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, reauthorization. So when I saw what the pilot was going to be, and I looked at the recent federal legislation that was going to be coming to pass, and of course they didn't pass, the, the Senate and the uh, House of Representatives had not passed a budget for all the time that President Obama was in office. And there was a reason for that, because the system wasn't up to place. Every state hadn't passed the Common Core. We hadn't had all the data system in place. But the reauthorization was taking place. And what was happening here was the, um, the way that the House of Representatives, it's called HR5, had written the bill. The whole agenda had to come about to fund that individual child. So how was that going to happen? How were they going to fund that those common core, which is actually called Brainwashing 101. Brainwashing 101, how are we going to do this and fund the individual child and make it happen? And the, and the answer was choice. In order for HR5 to fund the individual child, they had to come up with a choice agenda. And the choice agenda is that any private school, any public school, any religious school, any home school could be funded in choice so that it could go to any school wherever to fund the each individual child. So that money will follow the child. And also under IDEA, the Individual uh, Disabilities Education Act was going to be used. Of course, it already funds the individual child, the individual special ed child. But it is also incorporated into HR 5 under student specialized support. So if a child doesn't meet a specific outcome, they could use IDEA funds under special ed to remediate the child. So IDEA becomes your brainwashing 101 to fund the individual child. Now, what happens when all of these individual children are getting these fundings, but they have choice? So they can move to any, dist any district. They can move across the district to another school. They can move across the state. They could move across state lines. What is this going to do to your local district? Your ta their taxing authority, their taxing ability. 50% of their local taxes will have to follow that child somewhere else. 50% will be the federal funds. 
in several years, this will break the backs of that local district. Your local school board cannot function with all this money being divided up everywhere. So what does this really do to your local district? This is the beginning of the regionalization of your tax money being sent either community-wide, region-wide, or whatever, because you have to have equity in education. Every child has to have equal basis. And of course, there were different states already that had filed suit about the constitutionality of property taxes. And, you know, it's not fair that rich districts have so much money to work with, and these poor districts don't have any. We have to equalize the system. We have to be sure that every child has equal access, equal funding. Choice will do this. Choice, this choice legislation that was actually passed by the Republican House of Representatives will actually break the back of representative government. Now, what is happening on the Senate side? Okay, this was already passed. I couldn't believe it. It was passed in July without even a whimper. No one even discussed it. Oh, we're going to have choice. It's going to follow the child. Isn't this great? So then over in the Senate, Senate Bill 1094 is the Senate version. Interestingly enough, in the Senate version, they did not want to fund the religious schools. Of course, you know, it's the Democrats aren't going to fund the religious schools. That's a Republican agenda. But they also said, yes, they're going to fund the private schools in choice, and they're going to fund the charter schools in choice. Um, they also were going to set up a national school board. You're going to have a national committee, unelected committee, that's going to oversee the choice. Um, they also had the specialized student support. So they also had the idea. So the, the interesting that uh, this one came out of committee. It has not been voted on. We have heard that they might have to wait a year or so in order to reauthorize because everything is not ready yet. Um, but when you have the merging of these two bills and it goes into conference, you will then have the nationalization of education in the United States and the absolute destruction of representative government. Absolutely. This will destroy your local school board, your local tax base. It will destroy and control. There is no other aspect um, of what it can mean. Remember that the choice legislation follows the individual child. The common core standards follow the individual child. So you'll say, well, you know, when you look at the common core, they're just talking about math and reading language arts. Of course. We always start with what you might want as a parent, right? Well, several months ago, the chief state school officers who actually helped write and design the common core standard came out with a document saying, well, you can't have common core standards and college and career ready standards without dispositions. You have to have citizenship. In order to have citizenship, you have to have dispositions. So what actually are in the dispositions? And I'll try to find that for you so I can read exactly. And if this doesn't sound like the Pennsylvania EQA, I don't know what it sounds like. And this, of course, is from the chief's own particular document that they just um, released. We'll have to have critical thinking. And that's interesting, because whenever you talk about critical thinking, and uh, what exactly do you think they measure in critical thinking? You know, what is it? How do you define? Beyond text is what they call it, beyond text. How do you measure beyond text? And it was interesting because um, when we were fighting, fighting outcome-based education, there was a certain aspect of NAEP that was testing higher order thinking skills. And I had one of the parents from Iowa who had called me, who had uh, a proctor from Educational Testing Service that came in because the parents demanded to see the test. So I got this frantic phone call, and they said, Anita, we can't figure out which questions are bad. You know, and they were looking desperate.